All right, well, welcome. <sighs> Hello. Um, there's a good chance that most of you who watch this video don't know who I am. So hello, my name is Eileen, known as Smilin Eileen on the internet. Those of you who are my normal viewers, just gonna warn you, this week is uh, totally different. All right, let's just, let's just dive into this. So I made a series of these videos across platforms on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, just to set straight one time and put everything on the table to just clear the air and hopefully have me no longer involved in this thing. So this video is going to be the more in-depth, in detail put, again, put all the cards on the table and telling the whole story so that hopefully I don't need to talk about it again and hopefully won't have like questions about it. As many of you who know me know, I ended my engagement about eight months ago. I haven't talked about it on the internet or like publicly in any way for a couple reasons. I mean, one, like it's private. <laughs> It's private and I like, I mean, it was, it was painful. The relationship was relatively public. So I just like, didn't want to deal with it, I guess. Um, also I like, I don't need the like public internet validation around my breakup story. Uh, I also didn't really, I didn't want to like embarrass my ex like that. However, this has happened. Um, and I have now had multiple people reach out to me about it. And as I will soon explain, I am now for some reason involved. So that's why I'm making this video to just kind of like set my side of the story, my small side of the story here straight. Um, so that there are no more questions, but I have been contacted by multiple people about this startup, this thing, the, the Kickstarter thing with the. There's lots of scandal around it. People messaging me, telling me it's a scam, asking me for help with it. There's a lot, there's a lot there. Like I cannot even start to get into how much there is there. But so these people were reaching out to me and I'm like, what I, like I'm the ex in this situation. Like why am I being involved at all in any way? I, why? So once I started looking into it, the more I looked, the worse it got. There are many people out there explaining this from a very technical understanding with gaming development background and knowledge and uh, which I do not have. I do not have that. So I cannot speak to this. There is no way because I am not knowledgeable in that area. However, there are many videos that are going over this, so you can find those and take from them what you will. Through this investigation of this dream world Kickstarter scandal, as I will call it, um, it was brought to my attention that he has been utilizing our breakup as a sob story within the main Kickstarter campaign video. Like as a main point of the Kickstarter campaign, like, Sorry, uh, I literally just found out about this yesterday and I'm still kind of like wrapping my head around it. So I apologize if this video ends up being kind of rambly. Um, not only is he utilizing our breakup story to leverage his Kickstarter campaign, but he is also presenting a very curated and convenient narrative of the breakup to benefit him. So here I am, you have involved me now, I am involved. I also feel it is entirely time that I make this video and I'm going to honestly get this video out as fast as possible because as I'm literally filming this, Kira just released another video about Dreamworld in which I and my relationship and details of our breakup are included in the video. Um, first of all, don't super appreciate the people who <laughs> screenshot messages with me after they were talking to me without my knowledge that any of this was even happening. Little low blow there, but I am now very fully involved without really my say so. So while I was not planning on disclosing this whole story to the world, uh, it seems my hand is a little forced here. <sighs> if he wants to tell the world about our breakup story, to leverage his project, then let's tell the whole story and let's get the facts right. You want to use a breakup to benefit you. You don't get to pick and choose which details are convenient to you. So just to be clear, this video is not about Dreamworld. <laughs> there are plenty of those. This video is not about Dreamworld. This is just my time to set the story straight around my breakup and 
Believe me, it is a story. So let's start out by watching where this all began, where I became involved uh, in the main Kickstarter video. And yes, this is the main Kickstarter campaign video. A little bit of the background on why Dreamworld and why now. In March 2020, I was living with my fiance in New York City and uh, we were in our first apartment and struggling to pursue our aspirations there together. I'm gonna be picky on this one. <laughs> I know I'm gonna be picky here, but he says we were struggling to pursue our aspirations. I was doing fantastic, thank you very much. I had literally just hit a huge stride in my career. I had been flown out to Taiwan to represent the entire US side of a talent-based live streaming platform on a red carpet at an award show, uh, flown out to LA for photo shoots, had a billboard in Nashville, like just to name a few things that were happening. I was able, I had already quit my waitressing job at this point, like was fully supporting myself, like as a freelance creator. I was doing really, really well. So like super picky, has nothing to do with the breakup, has nothing to do with this project or the scandal, but I wanted to clear the details, clarified. Okay, <laughs> moving on. The prior seven months, uh, I was applying to at least 10 new jobs every day. And then suddenly, at the end of January, an incredible opportunity wanted to hire me. And the start date was March 17th. And March 15th, um, COVID hit New York City. And I lost my job as a waiter. And this opportunity rescinded their offer. And um, my fiance left me soon after. All right, let's talk about that for a second. Um, no, no, that's not actually how that happened at all. I did not leave him because he lost his job. He actually, after he lost his job, he then came to live with me and my parents in New Hampshire to like, you know, be out of New York City during COVID for five months. And my parents even paid him to do handiwork around the house so that he like had a semblance of a job. Like, that's just such a low, low blow. Like, come, come on. So anyway, I did not break up with him because he lost his job. Moving on. So One more thing. Um, I moved back in with my parents in California and began turning my life around. <laughs> my best friend, Gary, uh, a workaholic programmer started calling me every day to try and cheer me up. And one of the times we were talking, I, I said, you know, hey, why don't we just make the game we've always wanted to play? We got so excited. Yeah, okay. So <laughs> this whole narrative he's creating, the entire purpose that he's like, he's put in our breakup into this video for some reason is apparently because he like this idea for this game came out of like the sadness of like losing all of that and everything falling apart. No, <laughs> like he was literally multiple months into already developing this before I broke up with him. Like he was in the midst of working on this when I broke up with him and me breaking up with him did not affect that in any way. So like the fact that he uses our breakup in this way, like the fact that he's using it to leverage his Kickstarter video in this way, like it just feels like straight up emotional manipulate, sorry, emotional marketing. It's just, it's not the honest story, timeline, or motive. And so here I am, I'm involved now. Thank you so much for that. Um, okay, so now that that's established, why don't we actually dive into what actually happened? The rest of the story that goes unmentioned. Let me be very clear that this breakup was multifaceted. I, there were many, many reasons that this came about and many things that brought me to this decision. Honestly, I had already made up my mind to at least call off the engagement before I then found out about this, what is now seen as like the main reason I broke up with him. It's not the main reason, but it majorly affirmed my position to break up. So to understand the nail in the coffin, we must go back to the engagement. So. 
Enter Taipei, Taiwan, October 2019, the Golden Feather Awards. If you want to know what that was all about, I have a whole series of videos on there. I'm not gonna waste your time with that here. Basically, it was this big deal red carpet, my first red carpet ever. Uh, and he shows up, well, I thought he was in New York, uh, and proposes on the red carpet in front of all these cameras and wow, big, flashy, yeah, it was a surprise, uh, to say the least. So, well, about um, a month later, I go to get my ring sized and find out that the ring is in fact fake. And I don't mean like moissanite fake, I mean like they literally couldn't resize the ring to fit my finger because it would have entirely melted. The exact words from the jeweler were cheapest option on the market. I confronted him about the ring. I asked if he knew it was fake. And I mean, to be honest, I was concerned that he had been scammed into buying and paying for a full, like a full priced real ring when he got a fake one. He, he gave me this whole roundabout answer that to summarize was that he thought it was real when he purchased it, but he wasn't actually charged the price of a real ring. Um, and then when he called the jeweler after, you know, I asked about it, uh, he came to find out that the woman who actually sold him the ring had been fired because she had actually misled other customers in this way in the past. And so she was already fired. Um, and then of course I asked like, how did you not notice that like you weren't charged for the real price of a real ring? Like that's a big difference. Uh, and he gave me some convoluted answer about how like, his dad had made transactions in that bank account the same day that he was charged with the ring. So he only paid attention to the like overall amount. And so there was a lot more to the explanation, but that was the gist of it. So I chose to believe that. And I then requested that he instead replace the ring with something that not only could actually, you know, be sized to fit my finger, but something I could also properly wear and, you know, stand the test of time, considering this is supposed to be the symbol of our eternal union that I'm gonna be wearing for the rest of my life. I mean, this thing was super beat up and like dented within a few months. So that was November, 2019. Flash forward to August, 2020. COVID was a time of a lot of forced reflection for me as for a lot of people. I think most people felt that way. And so I had a lot of time to sit and think and realize that a lot of these things that were kind of bothering me weren't just kind of bothering me about our relationship. So come August, we began to discuss a laundry list of issues within our relationship. At that point, I was prepared and kind of already intended to call off the engagement. Well, at the end of that conversation, he told me that he needed to admit something to me. And he told me that he had actually been lying to me about the ring the entire time and that he knew it was fake when he bought it. So the whole story about the woman being fired, the thing, like that entire convoluted thing, all of that was a lie and he had persisted these lies for 10 months. Um, so now, of course, like, I mean, I felt, I felt incredibly betrayed, but like now, of course, I asked him like, why didn't you just tell me it wasn't real when I asked you at the red carpet? Because to be honest, and I'm not even sure I've told him this because I felt bad about this, but one of my first thoughts on the red carpet was, that's not real. That's too big to be real. Like this must just be big and flashy for the red carpet because you know, it was a public red carpet proposal. Like I assumed, oh, you know what? This is probably just a flashy fake one to look good for the red carpet. And there's gonna be, you know, a smaller but real one as the actual engagement ring. But then I asked him after the red carpet, like, oh my God, like, is this real? And he told me yes. So it didn't stop there because honestly, over the next couple of days, uh, he began to like kind of gaslight me about the situation um, where he started to try to make me seem materialistic about it as if I only cared about the price of the ring. Um, meanwhile, if that had actually been the case, wouldn't I have called it off 10 months prior when I found out that it was fake? Like, I mean, I was wearing this fake ring for 10 months. I don't like, 
No, I was upset that he lied to me about it for 10 months. And that the symbol of our engagement was now a lie. Like, now a lie. It, when I asked if he had ever intended on telling me that it was fake, um, he said that he had planned to tell me that night. Um, but that when he saw how excited I was, he didn't want to tell me. Like, I'm sorry. Was I not supposed to be excited about the engagement? Um, so then he also started saying things like, he also started saying things like, well, why do you deserve a diamond? Or why do I have to buy you a diamond? And things like that. And again, it was really like, he was just ignoring the real problem, which was that I was upset that he lied to me. Uh, so we were out in California at this time visiting his parents. So I flew back to New Hampshire early. And when he proceeded to not take responsibility for his actions over the next couple of days um, and kind of emotionally manipulated me to a certain extent, um, he, uh, well, I broke up with him. So there's the actual breakup. Um, keep in mind, we also had a two hour long conversation about other things that were real issues before I even found out about this. So like really the breakup was way more than that but like that was just you know cherry on top with that to this day I honestly believe that he still thinks I broke up with him because he didn't give me a real diamond ring which is just not the case and I said that I've said that point blank multiple times um because it is I you know the ultimate betrayal was that he had lied to me for 10 months about something pretty major, in addition to the laundry list of issues in our relationship. And so I actually, so I actually then went, uh, after I broke up with him, I actually went and bought my own engagement ring because I don't need him to buy me a diamond, but I do deserve diamonds. So I, I did that. There it is. He wants to leverage this breakup as an emotional manipulation tactic for his Kickstarter. Now we can use the whole story. Honestly, this relationship has just been really public, like starting by it being front and center when I first started my live streaming career. Um, and then with the proposal being on a red carpet, I guess I just find it funny that it's also ended in a now public explanation of the breakup to the world. Um, to be honest, while I didn't want to have to make this video, I also figured that this was probably gonna come out eventually. So instead of dancing around it and just making like a short video statement, I thought hard about it and I have decided like I wanted to lay it all out, full picture. And now I do not plan on making any more videos about this. So it better have all the information, right? And I do not wish ill will on him. I really don't. We had a lot of great time together, but we met when we were really young and we both grew a lot in the relationship and we ended up growing out of the relationship. To emphasize, I do not wish him any ill will. I did not when that whoever messaged me, the, when those messages that were then used in Kira's video, I like, I, I didn't understand the situation at all, at all. I had no idea what was going on. I literally just found out about this yesterday and here I am making this video. So truly did not intend for me to be involved or have to publicly speak about this at all. Um, but here we are. So I know I said, I wasn't going to address the whole scandal around this Dreamworld Kickstarter, which led me to make this video in the first place. However, it doesn't sit right with me to not clarify and address a few points here uh, because I have basically fallen down this rabbit hole of this whole thing now. And there are some things I've seen a lot of people speculating about that I feel like I can I don't know if I really should because I'm now already more involved than I ever intended to be, but I've decided I'm going to clarify these three things. One, one, Gary did do everything on his resume. Like 
everything on there. He did work at all of those companies. He worked there as a coder, not a janitor or anything. He did not get fired. Like, and it is my understanding that he is actually an incredibly talented coder. Now, again, I am not a coder. I don't have a background in this knowledge. So I don't know how any of what his experience could, you know, relate to gaming development. I'm just saying that like, he did not spruce up his resume in any way, to my knowledge. Number two, honestly, this one like kind of kills me. Um, only because the number of you who have said Zach is high in those videos, I, <laughs> the reason I laugh is because anyone who knows him personally, personally knows that he is the last person to ever touch drugs. I mean, this kid has literally avoided touching cigarettes, joints, any form of weed, like any of that, and would never even consider going anywhere near a harder drug like Coke. Like it is, it's hilarious though that people are commenting this only because like this literally was a joke between us about how like he seems like he's high on life at all times. So like, I get it, but I can guarantee you no, like, <laughs> no drugs were used in the making of this Kickstarter scandal. Lastly, the third thing that I can clear here, which is honestly, I think the most important is I can guarantee that these boys are not trying to scam anyone. They truly believe that they are going to deliver on everything that they have promised. This is not two guys who purposefully came up with a project that they knew they weren't gonna be able to do just so that they could get a quick payday from Kickstarter and then disappear with the money. That is absolutely not what is happening here. They really truly believe that they can make this happen. However, whether they can deliver on it or not, like again, I can't speak to that and I'm not going to because I don't have that you know, gaming development technical background or knowledge. Like I, there are plenty of other people who do have that, who have dove into this. You can go and watch their videos if you want and take from that what you will. I'm not gonna tell you to support them or not to support them. That is not my position. I am a neutral third party who somehow got involved here. Thank you for listening to my portion of this story. Um, this small portion of the story. I know this is not about me, um, but I just wanna like clear that up and honestly, felt like it was pretty much time to tell that story because it just kept kind of coming to the surface and now this is pushed it over. So this is a very different subject than what I normally cover on my channel. So for those of you who are normal subscribers, sorry. Uh, those of you who are new, if you're interested in personality live streaming, basically everything that happens outside of Twitch gaming, like consider dropping the subscribe, but this is not what I normally cover. Truly, thank you so much for listening to my side of this, anyone who is. And I really, truly wish everyone involved in this the best. Like, I really hope that this whole thing totally works out. I hope we are all playing Dream World in the future and it is as epic as promised. Like, really. <sighs> thank you. I will be back with my normal content next week. So thank you guys and remember to keep smiling.